Uh, welcome back to Workshop Friend. Last video we took um, time out to make a mini boring tool using old and broken taps and uh, today we're actually going to use it. So this is part 11 of upgrading my mini lathe. So we're going to use that boring tool to um, bore out the tooth pulley which will go on the motor, on the DC motor and uh, also the the larger 60 tooth uh, tooth, tooth pulley which goes on the counter shaft. So we'll go over to the lathe and we'll start uh, boring these two pulleys. I've double checked that the pulley is running uh, concentrically uh, with the clock on the outside but I've also checked along the length of the teeth here to make sure that um, it's not twisted so there's no swash on the front here. Now when we um, look closer at this you'll see that there is run out of this flange on here but um, that's not critical it's actually the the uh, the surface on which the belt runs which I'm worried about so that's running true and we're going to bore this out to eight millimeters my internal calipers are too big to get in here and I don't have any go no go gauges I have found a 5 16 drill uh, which is uh, 0.3125 well it's probably a bit, bit smaller than that on the shank and uh, I've turned a step in the end here so that, that just goes in and eight millimeters is a couple of thou over that so I will turn up to that step I'll know that I'll be just undersized and I've got a couple of thou to go to bring this to eight millimeters uh, I apologize for the mix of imperial and uh, metric dimensions but that's the way I work. So I can confidently remove this remaining material from the rest of the bore as long as I stay um, undersized relative to that step. So that's taking it to just about the size of the step wants to go in on the shank what about the the cutting end yeah so that's going in so I reckon that's uh, 0.1325 so we've got around about still about two thou to go so I'll take another thou off that and then we'll start to bring the motor shaft up there to test it I've brought the motor shaft up and it's beginning to enter that bore so I'm going to stop there and we will um, work on the other pulley but before I do that I need to just chamfer that hole and um, finish this off It's now time to work on the larger of the two pulleys, again using the four jaw chuck and gripping on the boss. The pulley is not uptight against the jaws of the chuck, allowing a small degree of clearance so that I can rock the pulley to get the face running true. Having trued up the face, I move the DTI to the perimeter and clock up for concentricity. Small adjustments were made. Normally I find that uh, if I'm careful, I can maintain squareness. I did go back and check the face again and indeed it had remained square so it's now ready for boring and again the same uh, situation as I found with the smaller one that uh, this is definitely true on the outside um, the face is square but you can see here that the bore is definitely out so um, that doesn't look good I'm surprised at that anyway it, for us it doesn't matter because I'm going to open this out to half an inch
it's rather annoying that the bush on the tooth pulley is not concentric with the outside and it's cosmetic but um, I'd like to just uh, true that up so I've mounted the pulley on its shaft um, tighten the nut up on the end here and we'll just skim this up just to make sure it uh, doesn't run out of true and doesn't look odd I've just assembled the frame, the counter shaft is in position and the motor in its position with uh, the belt taut and you remember from previous video that we left uh, the tapping holes in here for M5 and that will enable me to spot through into the frame to pick up the exact uh, positions of the holes. Um, we we'll remove this, tap these, and then open up the tapping size drills to clearance size. And then our socket head cap screws will come in from inside like that. So we'll move this over to the drill and uh, spot through these holes. Now it turned out it's going to be much easier to do this by hand. So I've just set this up in the vise and uh, the good old fashioned hand drill just to spot through. And then I can dismantle the frame and uh, continue in the pillar drill just so I make sure I get the holes nice and square. I start by uh, aligning each of the holes with the tapping drill, uh, remove and then in the same setting tap out the holes. That makes sure I get everything square. heating a piece of bright mild steel here in the vise in preparation for joining the polyurethane belting. Just a quick touch on both sides, the plastic belts quickly and then press and hold together. I found that uh, by just checking in a couple of planes I was able to get a good square joint. I was thinking of making a little jig but it didn't seem to be necessary. So I've gone ahead and um, assembled everything that uh, I have so far. Um, things that I've not shown you are especially this uh, box here, which I fabricated from one millimeter aluminum sheet. That sits on top of the wooden box at the back here. So here you have the 400 watt power supply um, from mains to 24 volts. That's adjustable. That feeds into the speed controller here so that's connected up with an on off and reversing switch and also a speed controller so the counter shaft is mounted on the board the lathe is mounted between the two i've got this mechanism here which needs a little adjustment but um basically you can see the concept here that uh, gives you quick release for changing the speeds on the v pulleys 
and it also um, stops at this position here. Uh, you saw me join the the uh, poly belt, and um, I tried it twice, and it was unsuccessful. Um, when I ran the the drive, it just broke, and uh, I discovered actually this is this is old belting which has degraded, and I need to get some more. So that's uh, another task for later. I need to tidy up the wiring. Um, this is just a uh, a trial run and I'll go around and get the proper cable lengths in there and a proper cable tie for the mains uh, for the mains lead. So we'll have a look at the motor now, see it running and a few comments on that. So you can hear the fan running on the power supply. So we'll uh, just ramp the motor up. And uh, we can reverse direction as well. I need to then move on to getting the chuck mounted. And as I mentioned before, I have a choice of either changing the thread on the existing mandrel or putting a new thread in the chuck. And I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. Anyway, I hope you join me for the next episode. Uh, as we move forward in getting this uh, lathe operational. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of today's video. If you've appreciated the video, then do give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you've not done so already. Uh, comments always welcome. Please do add your comments below or suggestions. Uh, also suggestions for future topics as well. They're also welcome. Uh, so I hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining me.